The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 347 Thinking Stylishly Starlight! There you are! Maple looked relieved to see her, and Starlight briefly felt guilty for slipping away and assuming she wouldn't be missed. Sorry, she said, pacing quickly over. I got distracted. Oh? By what? Maple smiled, probably hoping to engage Starlight in conversation, but instead making her feel awkward. Telling her mother she had been discussing plotting behind her back wasn't something Starlight envied doing. I'll tell you later, she said, dodging the question and instead looking to Willow, who was fiddling with something by the stove. I'm hungry. Are you making more food? Willow stepped back, fondly shaking her head. I'm cleaning this ruined pan so Maple doesn't have to. Are you still hungry? Starlight sat up straight and looked down at her belly. Yeah, a little. Let's see what we can get you then. Maple got up, humming, and walked back to the kitchen. Something warm? Are you still cold? Nodding, yawning, Starlight sat down, and Amber leaned over and tousled her mane with a weak, floppy hoof. How does warm cinnamon applesauce sound, Maple asked, already shifting around and banging something in a cupboard as she fetched a proper pot. I dig that, Amber announced, answering for her. Mind heating some up for me, Grandma? Valet snickered in the corner, and Willow shook her head. I'll get out of your way if you need a space here, Maple, she said, putting the pan down and taking several steps back. It'll only be a minute, Maple assured, and Starlight settled in to wait. So, Anridge. Amber tilted her head back and stared at the ceiling. Now that we're decided, who's excited? I mean, we're going on a bit of a somber note, but I think it'll be fun. What do you girls want to plan to do? Aside from not dying, Maple threw a wry smile over her shoulder. I'd like to find a place to stay and then stay there for a day without endlessly planning and hurrying and running around. That's what it was like before everything went wrong, at least. I had to fight you out to stop, slow down, and do something fun and leisurely. We should just go slowly, and if there's anything we decide we need to do, just put it on a list and don't leave until we've gotten around to it. Emma shrugged, grinning. Well, you're the expert. Valet raised an eyebrow. Yeah, but you might want to have some idea of where you're going, right? Like, okay, you want a place to stay. She tapped the side of her head. I've got this recollection of you grabbing this hotel room and then getting massively lost trying to find it again. Now, odds are I can bail you out if you get yourself into an ordinary, didn't know the city level of trouble like that, but remember that Iron Ridge is like 10 miles across and the only public transportation is the cheating kind where we stole a ride from Blue Leaf to Grand Acorn? If you guys just wander and go anywhere without a plan, you might wind up tired or stuck along the way. Maple bit her lip and looked between her friends. That's cool, though, Valet added. Just keep in mind that he can't instantly teleport home. Amber touched her chin and thought. Well, we do have you and maybe Gerardo as flyers. If one of us did get too tired, maybe you could fly us back in an emergency. Valet winked. Yup, emergency. Let's keep that as a backup, though, because I can actually get tired, too. Do you suppose Gerardo is coming with us? Maple asked with a frown. I know I'm being hard on myself about pushing us farther than we should have, but he started it. Gerardo not letting us rest and hurrying with his crates was what got me and Starlight into trouble in the first place. Where even is Gerardo? Amber asked, frowning. Me and Valet saw him still hanging out in the plaza, though his audience isn't quite as big as it used to be. I bet his novelty's wearing off, but I haven't seen him back here to hang out with us in a while. I'm not gonna miss him. Maple winced. Well, I might have yelled at him when he broke my door. Oh, yeah, that, Amber drooped. We should get that fixed sometime, don't you think? You think? Maple growled. Ooh, sensitive subject. Sorry. Amber wilted her ears going back. Look, I know Gerardo sounds like he wasn't the greatest traveling buddy, but I liked him. He was fun. Silly and grand and not serious like an adventure should be. All the mayors at the plaza certainly think so. Valet nodded, pacing closer to the center of the room. Yeah, problem is, being silly and not taking things seriously when things are serious is a recipe for getting beaten up or worse. That's fine for me, though. I just never counted on him in the first place. She glanced over her shoulder as if making sure she was in private and added, You think he's coming back with us? I mean, we don't have to invite him. Amber vehemently shook her head. He'll find out, feel bad, and I don't want to do that. I'll talk to him about it, and hopefully this trip will be not serious and fun, so it won't be out of place. Eh, yeah, Valet shrugged. Well, you said it. It's hoping. Willow spoke up, breaking her silence. Maple? Maple? 
Maybe me and Amber should talk to him without you around? I'm sure Gerardo feels that there's tension between you two, and that's why he's staying away right now. But we could talk to him and see if we can reach an understanding. You're a friend, but I wouldn't like to hurt his feelings if I can avoid it. Maple grimaced. If he helps fix my door, I'll consider it. For now, I don't know. Starlight, here's your applesauce. Who else wanted some? Amber? Valet patted her stomach and belched. Yeah, I might have stuffed myself a bit too much earlier. But save some for second breakfast, okay? Second breakfast. Amber rolled her eyes, accepting the bowl Maple gave her and carefully making sure it was on the table before lapping some up. Sounds like an idea I could get behind. So, where to after this? Did someone say something about sycamores? The bathhouse? Maple nodded and hummed. I was thinking some of us could use it. Some more than others, Amber chuckled, waggling her eyebrows at Valet. Hey! Valet self-consciously touched her mane. I take baths. She's talking about your mane, Starlight grunted, looking up from her nearly drained applesauce bowl. Half of it is missing, and there's a style pony there who can make it look better. Valet frowned, pulling the surviving ends of her mane into view. Yeah, yeah, I don't usually like ponies messing with my mane. Typically anyone who wants to just wants to dump a bucket of weird stuff on my head, and I once got a revenge scheme when someone thought it would be funny to make me go bald. Foil it easily, but still. Also, once got hit by a scheme I didn't foil, where some smart guy thought it would be funny to put bows and ribbons in my mane. Didn't set off my cutie mark because they weren't technically trying to hurt me, and they somehow found where I was sleeping. Bows and ribbons, huh? Amber's grin intensified. Well, we did say the point was to make it look better. Oh, no! Bully's eyes widened. No, don't you get any ideas. This is exactly why I don't like my main messed with. If you try and give me some cutesy main cut... Amber chucked evilly. Girls, what do you think would look better on her? I think she has enough left to pull off a street comb bang in front, but if not, she definitely has enough to copy Shine Spark style. I actually want to try it myself. I bet it would look good to me. And if we go with bows, do you think front or back would be better? Or sides? Both sides? Oh! What if we made the back look like Shine Sparks and gave the front a street bang with the side just long enough to show it off, and then we put one bow in her tail and another in... End of chapter 347